What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. This is the latest addition to Fury B's 3 inch lineup and it is also the most powerful for a 3 inch of course. It is a feature rich F4 powered 140 millimeter micro quad sporting some big 1506 motors which are accompanied by some 28 amp BL Heli SESC. This micro quad is known as the Space Wolf DT140. I was actually very excited to be able to get my hands on this one. I actually started noticing this micro maybe a month or maybe two months ago, but I guess they didn't release it until just recently. First off, all the pictures listed on the product page show an older version of the DT140. The one I received is almost entirely revamped from the flight controller to the ESC's camera and most noticeably the motors. All for the better in my opinion. The larger upgraded motors provide more thrust while the updated flight controller and ESC uses pins instead of wires which can reduce noise and just creates an overall cleaner setup. Let's start off with an unbox and see what we get. One low ESR capacitor and that's it. The only other thing in the box is of course the DT140 which does come fully assembled with the props already installed. So let's take a closer look at it. First of all I should point out that there are some obvious differences from the quad that I received compared to the one that's listed on the product page. As I mentioned earlier, the motors, uh, everything from the flight controller to the camera are all different parts. And in my opinion, they were all updates for the better, mostly. There is another micro quad that is very similar and for around the same price. This is one of the things that kind of leaves me scratching my head. Why release multiple quads that will just end up cannibalizing each other? I mean, if I had to choose between the two, the Space Wolf is an easy choice. An F4 versus F3 flight controller, 1506 motors versus 1306 motors, as well as a 28 amp ESC versus a 20 amp ESC. Excellent quality carbon fiber, as you can see here, it's very stiff. Beveled edges on the arms make it look very nice. Before we do anything else, let's take a couple measurements and see how much this thing weighs. 144 grams, I think that's a good weight. Next, let's measure the frame. Oh, we should probably do this in millimeters. First up, the top plate. Let's round this to 1.5 millimeters. Next, we have two plates that sandwich the arms together. Uh, the top plate is 1.5 millimeters, and I'm assuming the bottom plate is the same. 1.5, yep. Here, we're measuring the space between the top plate and the VTX which gives you a good idea on what type of receiver you can fit in there. Approximately 9.6 millimeters which is plenty of space for just about any type of receiver, well any type of micro receiver. And the maximum width for the camera is 19 millimeters. Alright I think that's good for now. If you'd like me to measure anything else please post a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, with that out of the way, let's uh, take a closer look at some of the components. We're going to start off first with the motors. And they are 1506s at 3400 kV, which as I mentioned earlier, are different than the ones listed on the product page. The larger 1506s are more powerful over the smaller 1306, but with additional size also comes additional weight. Not an issue though, there is plenty of power to go around. These motors are very well built, they spin up smooth, and performs very well. Here's a little clip to give you an idea of the power. These motors do look similar to the ones that come with the Fury B Geniuser, um, just the top portion or the bell. The bottom portion went through a little weight reduction, leaving just a bare minimum for it to be able to be secured down to the frame. I think the newer motors might even be more powerful. Well, actually I flew the two quads one after the other and the DT140 does indeed feel more powerful even with the Geniuser being the lighter quad. I mean given that both quads do have similar specs, what else would it be? Alright, 
uh, let's remove the top plate so we can check out the tri stack for two millimeter hex head screws. It is a little difficult to remove. It's uh, actually stuck onto the camera mount. Just pry at it at one of the front corners. It takes a little bit of force, but it should come off. Oh, whoops. Pulled the antenna off. I actually ended up losing it during my first flight session when I crashed. IPEX connectors don't need much force for it to come off. Alright, so this three level stack is the HGLRC Fly Tower XJBF428. Wow. It's a micro F4 setup that'll actually work on a pretty wide range of frames. You can throw this thing on anything from a 2 inch up to a 5 inch, which you'll probably need an, ad an adapter for, but I see no reason why this wouldn't work on larger frames. Just make sure you keep the voltage at a max 4S. The first level is a micro VTX. It's a power switchable with 25, 100, 200, and 350 milliwatts, as well as a pit mode. Acceptable input voltages range from 7 to 26 volts. To change the settings, you can use the button located on the side of the board. It even has a little LED readout. Or you can use your radio and goggles to change the settings. That's how I personally like to do it. It's a lot easier to find the channels you want this way. And I mean, it's a lot faster, a lot easier to use as well. We have a dipole antenna that's connected to the board using an IPEX connector. It works good. I mean, I had good reception, good range. And it's more durable than any CP antenna out there. It's not something that I imagine would easily break. If anything, it's more so the durability of the IPEX connector that's in question. And like I said before, it doesn't take much for it, the connector to come off. Uh, mine came off uh, when I crashed, pulled the sucker right out, and it was gone. I So I suggest using some zip tie and securing it to the top plate, just so you don't lose it if you ever get in a crash. Next we have an F4 flight controller. It's a solid board, very fast with a bunch of features, 16 megabytes for black box storage, current sensor, Betaflight OSD, and supports 2 to 4 cell LiPos. Arrives flash with Betaflight's Omnibus F4 version 3.2.5. For the ESC, it's a 28 amp 4-in-1 BL Heli S BB2 board, peak current of 35 amps. You'll be able to run one shot up to D-Shot 600 with no problem, and it comes flash with BL Heli S firmware 16.5. The flight controller and the ESC can run both the PID loop and gyro rates easily at 8K. I really do like the fact that they use pins instead of wires to connect the flight controller to the ESC. This reduces interference and really cuts down on the clutter of having a bunch of wires just running every which direction. And we have some heat shrink here, uh, keeping the motor wires nice and tidy. And it actually does a good job holding the motor wires in place so that it doesn't get caught up in the props. And there's a couple other things that are connected to the flight controller. First off, there's the, the low ESR cap. You'll have to solder this on yourself, but it's easy. I mean, if you have any soldering skill, it shouldn't be a problem. I just soldered it onto the battery terminals and it has a stiff wire underneath the heat shrink so it'll hold it in place by itself there's no need to actually tie it down the DT140 doesn't come with a battery strap so you will have to supply your own it's not one of the normal size battery straps uh, as you can see it's one of the skinnier ones I think the standard size strap is uh, 20 millimeters wide uh, for this quad you'll want to get one that is 15 millimeters and also included is a buzzer which sounds off when your battery goes below a certain voltage and you can also bind it to a switch to use it as a lost model alarm and I guess this one does move around a little bit so you should probably tie this one down somewhere I just zip mine to the top plate and the last component is the DT140's camera unlike the product listing it does not come with an actual run cam camera it's a micro size 600 TVL CCD camera that looks similar to the Runcam Micro Swift. Well, kind of. I mean, the only similar looking part is that black or orange part. Everything else looks different. Regardless, I think we get a clean, crisp, detailed looking picture that is on par with the Runcam Micro Swift. 
and I really do think you'll agree once you see the FPV flight footage, the detail is top notch. The bottom of the DT140 is missing some much needed friction. The smooth carbon plate doesn't provide much grip for your batteries, so you'll definitely want to add something to the bottom. Whether you're using foam or rubber, it's good to have something there to not only prevent the battery from sliding around, but also to prevent the screw heads from poking little dents into your LiPo packs. All right, and that's going to be it for the show and tell section. Uh, this next part is going to be just me going over my beta flight settings. Uh, these are just things that I normally change for all of my quads. We are going to start off with some line of sight flying. I think the first one was, uh, this one is 3S and the second one is 4S. 